Gas Station Business 101 podcast. I'm your host, Shabir Hossein, and this is episode number 16. Welcome to the one and only Gas Station Business 101 podcast, where you can learn all the secrets about how to start and operate a gas station business successfully and make money. This podcast is brought to you by the good folks at CSB Academy Publishing Company. And now, here is your host, Shabir Hossein. Hello there. Welcome to episode number 16 of Gas Station Business 101 podcast. In the next two episodes, today's and the next one, we will be talking about money once again, especially how to add income to our bottom line by simply adding some extra income generating mini businesses to our existing business. The ideas I will be talking about today does not apply only to gas station business, but to most other brick and mortar retail businesses that you see around town. All of those can also try this and see some extra monthly income in their pocket. So stay tuned. In gas station setting, as I mentioned earlier in previous episodes, where I'm, al- I'm sure you already know that if you look around in any gas station, we carry right around 2,000 SKUs or SKUs of different product categories. For the ideas that I will be sharing today, we will be adding some products to the store, but not in the sense where if you're selling candy bars, let's say Snicker bars, I'm not asking you to add more varieties of Snicker bars, which I already believe you do carry. And I'm not asking you to carry more type of varieties of cigarettes or tobacco. Those are the merchandise that we already carry. So I will not be talking about candy, cigarette, or groceries here. This is not about that. It is about adding something that is different than what we currently carry in our store, but it will be like opening a mini store within your existing store. Add items and lines of products that your competitors do not carry. So essentially, we can be a leader in those products for our area and stand out in the crowd. See, one thing about having a mini business within your business that we will be talking about today uh, and five items that I will be touching on in this episode and then another five or six items in the next episode. But more importantly, one thing you have to understand, if you were, let's say, we will be talking about vape shop or electronic cigarette, one example If you are trying to open a vape shop or uh, electronic cigarettes, and I'm sure you see all around you that there are some popping up in every corner. In that event, let's say you want to open one up, you have to pay the rent, the power, the, the utility bills, and you have to most likely sign a contract with the landlord where you have to be there for 10 years or 15 years. And if you break the lease, uh, there will be a lot of penalties. Then you have to employ staff that store and have somebody there from, let's say, 9 to 10 o'clock at night or 9 to 9, whichever the case may be, whichever way you set up your operation hours. If you're doing that same store opening inside your gas station or your other type of retail that you already have, and it will only take, let's say, 50 square footage of space, you'd using your own power bill, your own utility bills, even your own employees that are already working in that business. And whatever revenue it generate out of this extra business, after the product cost, the rest is yours to keep. So it is very simple to understand that once you open a business inside of another business, there are a lot of things you do not have to pay for. The fixed cost, some of the variable cost and, and whatnot that we touched on in previous episodes. But without further ado, let's dive in and let's talk about those five items that I think some of you may have already done it. Some of them, some of you may already be doing that. And some of you already have seen other stores doing it. So why not you do try that and see if you can generate some extra money? So the number one thing I would recommend, which I have tried and I'm still doing it. So that's why I'm going to put that at number one, which is 
having a mini vape shop inside your store. Now, what is a vape shop? That term may sound foreign to you, but vape shop is electronic cigarette store. I'm sure all of you have seen people smoking those electronic cigarettes where there is no uh, fire, but the smoke's coming out, literally. And now that R.J. Reynolds, Philip Morris, and and Lorillard, everybody got into it, so we are already selling some of these electronic cigarettes uh, in our store. So why not carry a brand of electronic cigarettes and varieties of it and see how it does? The way I found out about electronic cigarette, I'm a smoker myself, not proud of it, and I'm trying to quit, but fact is I'm still a smoker. And back in 2012, I had a throat surgery for some other reason, not because of smoking. And after the surgery, I could not smoke for a few days. And I needed some nicotine in my body. And that's when I thought about electronic cigarette because I've seen people smoke it around town. It was still fairly new back in 2012. So I searched around my town and couldn't find very good quality electronic cigarettes. So whatever I found, I went ahead and bought it and puffed on it and realized that they're not very good quality because in 30 minutes, either I was out of liquid, which is the juice, nicotine juice, or the battery ran out of charge. But regardless, I got hooked onto electronic cigarettes and I started, I did not smoke real cigarettes for about two years. And then once I started smoking that, I've seen how people were excited to see that a smoker is smoking electronic cigarette and they kept asking me if that was satisfying to be smoking electronic cigarette in, instead of regular cigarettes. And I said, yes, because I quit regular cigarettes and I was smoking electronic cigarettes. And yes, it does have nicotine and you can go up and down as far as how much nicotine you want. So you can make it very strong or very light. And I was taken in the middle approach where, you know, it's not too strong, not too light. And then I had some other people try it. I said, give it a try. See if you're happy with it. And some of those people said, hey, this tastes really good. It doesn't have bad odor because, you know, smoking inside a room can stink up the whole room. But in this case, it doesn't do that. And if you use a nice flavored nicotine juice like mango or blueberry, cotton candy and different types, there are hundreds of different kinds of electronic cigarette liquid. And They said, well, it sounds pleasant. I mean, smells pleasant. And I even, I was smoking uh, banana flavor at one time. And a lot of people said, hey, it smells really good. So I got interested in that industry. And I said, you know what? I need to dig deep into this and maybe I can invest and make money in it. So with that thought, I started digging and I started researching. And I found out, yes, there is a big market for it. And even though there was like only one vape shop by then that opened in our city, so I knew that there are vape shops opening up slowly but surely. And at first I thought I would open up a vape shop outside somewhere. And then it came to me, why would I do that and have extra labor and rent and utility bills? Instead, I should open up a small vape shop in every store we own and operate and ask other people if they want to do the same and I would supply to them. So with that thought, I contacted some manufacturers in China, the city called Shenzhen. It's the city of industry in China. That's where about thousand of these companies exist. All of the, all of those companies, all thousand companies or more, I believe it's thousand to twelve hundred right now. The count has gone up quite a bit in the last three years. It used to be about seven hundred companies that manufactures electronic cigarettes, but in the last three years, it it pretty much exploded. So now it's about 1,200 companies that makes electronic cigarettes. Some of them are very big companies with uh, thousands or more employees and some of them with 10, 15 employees. I contacted about seven of those companies. Then I flew into Hong Kong and then we took a taxi, went to China, went to Shenzhen, which is about 45 minutes to an hour drive and stayed three, four days and met with about six of these vendors, went to their factory saw everything, how it's done, and I test, tested the devices, and I said, okay, I like this, I don't like that. And then after the sixth uh, company visit, I realized out of those six, I only liked two of them because they were decent enough size with good enough prices, but the quality, more importantly, was decent. So I made a deal with them that I would start placing orders. Came back 
and started placing small orders like three, four, five thousand dollars at a time, and started bringing that in. Then I started creating a brand around it, and I got different types of displays to display those. And every store we have, and other stores that I went to, I said, well, I only need two shelf space, about three feet wide in two shelves, and that's all I need. And I will put up some displays and cases and. And whatnot, and I will put some advertising outside the door or inside the store and whatnot. And I started noticing that it it went pretty much through the roof at the beginning. The very first store I set it up, our own store. It's a semi high volume store. After the very first week, I noticed we were doing anywhere from two hundred to three hundred dollars a day just on electronic cigarettes. Of course, well, it has something to do with the advertising that I've done in that area. It's a little bit of rural area, so not very many people. I mean, people have seen uh, electronic cigarette, but they didn't have a vape shop or any other store to go buy it. And when I brought it in, I put on a very good price. I checked online, and and there are many online retailers that were selling similar stuff. And I noticed, let's say, if they were selling a blister pack, six fifty. Ego kit. I'm using some terms you may not understand if you don't sell them. Once you start selling them, you will know what I'm talking about. These are the cheap kind of electronic cigarettes. And I was using a C4650 blister pack that back then was costing me around $6 to bring from China. And online and everywhere else, they were selling it for, let's say, $29.99. The profit margin was phenomenal. But I didn't want to do that. I said, no, I will sell it for $19.99. And I'm going to make sure the quality is decent so I don't have people complaining, coming back and say, this is junk. I didn't want to do that. But I did tell everybody, once you buy it, you take it home. If you try it and something goes wrong, bring it back and I'll, re- I'll either exchange it or refund your money. But don't bring it back five days later because it's an electronic device. You, if you don't know how to use it, you may ruin it and I'm not going to be responsible for it. But regardless, and I also found some e-juice, which is the liquid part of this deal. You know, electronic cigarette, let me explain how it works in case you do not know what I'm talking about. And, and it's not that you should have known. No, it's, it's something, it's a new industry. And if you're not a smoker, you should not have any interest in it at all. But from business point of view, you should interest yourself in this. And a typical electronic cigarette has two parts. One, the bottom part is the battery, where it energizes from and the top part where the liquid goes is called atomizer now you fill up the atomizer with liquid and it has a technology in there where when the battery is pressed or on it drips a drop of liquid into an atomizer and atomizes the liquid in result you get vapor or smoke coming out of it so if you use it the wrong way can even explode. I have heard that electronic cigarette has exploded. I have not seen any, and I've been using it for many, what, three, four years now. But again, it's an electronic device. So everybody has to know how to use it and use it responsibly. And uh, they have to know how it operates. So if you keep something on and don't are not doing anything, just holding the button to on position, like when you're cranking your car, if you hold the key to the to the crank position, even after it cranked, you're going to burn up the starter, I'm sure, or something else for that matter. So similarly, electronic cigarette with the wrong way of using it, you can either ruin the battery, ruin the atomizer, or it can the battery can even melt. But besides that point, when I started bringing in all of these, I found a good e-liquid vendor because I knew one thing, once I sell an electronic cigarette, they may not come back next day and buy another kit, but they will buy liquid because liquid is something they will be using it often. So they will run out of it and they will buy more liquid. So what I did is I started carrying cigarette kits and then mostly I concentrated on accessories because by then I smoked it long enough to know that batteries do last, good quality batteries will last about a year if you charge them regularly and keep it in good, clean uh, shape. Now, atomizer is something, let's say you put banana flavor in it. Next thing you know, you want to try blueberry flavor. So you cannot put blueberry on top of banana because it's not going to taste good. So a lot of people 
carry three, four, five atomizers because they fill it up with different types of flavors of liquid so they can try different flavors. So I realized the market was in the atomizer because batteries are just batteries because once you have one, you can use it in four different atomizers. So what I started doing is I found my supplier and I told him, you need to give me some nice looking display that I can display atomizers and batteries and other accessories. So when I took three feet wide shelf, I put up an atomizer display, a battery display, and chargers and other next links and whatnot. Those are the accessories. And the bottom shelf, three foot wide, I started putting different types of kits. At first, I started only selling kits that cost less than $50 because I figured in gas station setting, you don't want to sell $80, $90 worth of kit because a lot of people will not spend that kind of money in a gas station. But once you establish yourself as a good retailer for electronic cigarettes, then you can start going up and carrying higher grade uh, electronic cigarettes, which are pretty much the cream of the crop. And they do cost more, but they do work wonders. So at first, I started carrying less valued electronic cigarettes. And I started seeing, as I said, two to three hundred dollars a day. Not every day, but there are highest I've seen was $311, I believe, in just one day. And that is not a joke because, as I said, the profit margin was outstanding. I was buying things for, let's say, $6. I was selling it at my store for $19.99. So just to give you an example, most of this, even let's say the atomizer, uh, I carried a lot of different atomizers, and I still do, from let's say $6 range to $20 range. So if somebody just starting out, they will start off with the cheaper kind. Once they get used to it, then they want more vape, more smoke. So they go for the higher quality atomizers. And that's when they spend $15, $18, $20. So I started carrying these and I started noticing that I sell mostly atomizers and batteries. And mind you, I was buying an atomizer and I still do from $1.20 to let's say five, six dollars, and I'm selling it from six to twenty dollars. So again, it's if you're talking about markup, it's three hundred percent markup in this kind of things. So you can understand and imagine how profitable these items are. So let's say you do not do three hundred dollars a day because by now everywhere you look there is a vape shop, and a lot of the other big retailers sells most of these things. Even Walmart got into it. Sam's Club got into it. Everybody sells it. But again, if you can carry good quality electronic cigarette in your store with clean, good advertising, and as long as the quality is good and the price is right, people will first buy an atomizer, try it, say, hey, you know, it's pretty good. They will go tell their friends and they will buy one more and then they will buy the liquid. And pretty soon you may have $50, $60 a day sales. But once you have that, let's take a look what may happen. If you do $50 a day sales in electronic cigarettes, which is not much, then at the end of the month, you sold $1,500 of electronic cigarettes. And let's say you didn't buy it from China. You bought it from a local vendor in the country, inside the country. You may not get to quadruple your money or triple for that matter. As long as you can double it, then what will happen is you just made $700 out of that three feet wide space what else could you have put on that shelf that would have generated 700 extra dollars for you i don't think there is very many items or or merchandise that you can put on just a three feet wide space and generate that kind of money so look into it but don't i've seen a lot of gas station where the vendor that supplies them with all kinds of medicines and whatnot brings in some electronic cigarette. And they're not specialized in it, but they just said, hey, everybody sells it, so I need to carry some so I can offer it to my retailers. And they bring it in. Some, Most of them are totally junk. And once you sell one or two of them, people try it and say, hey, it tastes burnt. You know, the battery is not uh, has enough power. It doesn't have produce enough smoke. So what you have done is you're ruining that business. So... If you don't know how this works, talk to somebody who smokes. I'm sure you will find somebody around you who smokes electronic cigarettes. Talk to them. Say, hey, which one tastes better? Which one is good? Which one is bad? Get yourself educated and visualize the items. And then 
if you cannot find anybody around your area that carries electronic segment, I'm sure you can find somebody online that will sell you uh, varieties of this and you can set it up yourself by mail order and within a week or two, you will be in business. Now, one thing I have done that took off really well, remember that blister pack I told you about that I was buying it for $6? Now I buy it for, let's say, three fifty. What I've done in most of the stores that I supply to and sell to, even within our own stores, I put a ad, nice looking ad, just simple one page ad, text ad that says, buy an electronic cigarette kit for $19.99 and get two bottles of e-liquid for free. Meaning, they know, most of the customers know that those packs, they see it in a lot of stores that sells for $15, $20, $30. Now, here I am offering a kit, the same kit, which has a charger and an electronic cigarette. This is the very basic starter one. Not a very good quality, but it works. So if you have never smoked this, you will try it and say, hey, I like it. Maybe I want to get a bigger one. I've seen people smoke bigger and better ones. Maybe I'll try that. So for people who have never tried electronic cigarette, for them to spend 20 bucks and get the liquid and the cigarette makes sense. They're like, I'll be out 20 bucks. So no big deal. But when somebody just wants to try it out and you tell them, hey, this is a kit for 30 bucks and then you buy liquid for $10 each bottle. He's looking at it. I don't know what to buy. I don't know if this is going to work. But when you tell him, hey, it's 20 bucks, it's a package deal. Try it. If you like it, you like it. If not, don't worry about it. They're thinking, $20 I can risk. And trust me, this thing has taken off quite well. And I have done really well with that special. Where the retailers, let's say I sold them the kit for five bucks and the two liquid, I sold them the liquid for another five bucks. So they're buying the whole thing with two liquids and an electronic cigarette kit for $10 and they're selling for $19.99, which is a very good deal for customers. And at the same time, the retailers are having 100% markup or 50% margin, which is not bad again. So if you sell three, four, or let's say you even sold two of these a day, that's what, $40 sells a day just on those two kits again which is not a matter of joke if you did that every day just sold two kits you made twenty dollars every day just from that don't forget once they buy this week later they'll come back and say hey you know i like i really like that blueberry liquid so i need to buy one more bottle and that's again you're generating income through residual sales of e-liquids and that's what people will buy mostly once they have enough atomizers, and atomizers usually last anywhere from 15 days to about, let's say, month, month and a half, depending on how you use it, what kind of liquid you use in it. So the life expectancy of atomizers are shorter than batteries, of course. So if you have a customer that is smoking an electronic cigarette, you can hope that he will buy an atomizer every three weeks to a month. But he will buy a liquid almost every week. Because these are 10 milliliter bottles, they last about five, six days. So you will have sales from your, let's say you built up 10 customers, you will have that much sell every month. And that is an extra income for you from that three feet wide space. Now, here is an, another approach to electronic cigarettes, and this is fairly new. So some of them you may have heard about it, but not have seen that. But this is where it may go, and I want you to know ahead of time, we all know that marijuana, which is cannabis, is illegal most everywhere in the world, in, including the United States. But we do know it is legal in Colorado. And it is legal for medical use in some other states. I believe five, seven states now legalized marijuana for medical use. But only in Colorado right now, as the time of recording, it is legal for other uses, for example, recreational uses. I'm not asking you to smoke marijuana or sell them, no. And I do not smoke that, so don't think I'm advocating that. But here is the thing. As a business person, if something is legal, 100% legal to sell, why wouldn't you sell it? And again, I'm not asking you to sell marijuana, but what I'm asking you to sell, for example, if you have a store in Colorado 
the electronic cigarette industry has gone to a different direction now where there are something called dry arb vaping meaning the devices look just like electronic cigarettes where you put liquid so instead in this case you do not put liquid but you put dry arb what is dry arb dry arb can be anything it can be some leaves tobacco leaves any other type of leaves that you make it to a very fine form of ground and you put it inside of that machine and it will produce smoke from the battery from the atomizer i believe in this case it's not an atomizer it's a vaporizer of some sort now i'm not a very good in technology so i know it uses a little bit of different technology than what it does for the liquid but it does vaporize the arb and thus producing a lot of smoke so the reason i'm mentioning this is let's say you are in a state where medical marijuana is legal and let's say a patient that doctors prescribed marijuana to needs to smoke and he or she can hardly walk they cannot get out of bed and go outside to smoke marijuana because you know marijuana cannot be smoked inside in hospitals or anywhere else so they have to go outside but in this case i've seen it on tv one day and then i read about it that's when i started realizing that this is where the industry is going so what they do is they use this dry arb vaping machines and put the marijuana in it and smoke so in this way they can consume the marijuana to alleviate their pain but they can smoke it inside so if somebody is in really bad health that cannot get out of bed they can still heal their pain by staying inside and and using this electronic vaping machine and if you as i said if you're in colorado then good luck to you because you can sell not marijuana again but these machines these devices anywhere but one thing to understand if you're not in a state where marijuana is legal even for medical use you can still sell dry arb vaping machines because it's not only used for marijuana but it is used for other dry arb smoking I'll give you an example on my last trip to china about 7 months ago when they first showed me this device i took one out and looked at it and one and i had a cold when i was visiting and one of the engineers that was showing me this he said he noticed that i had a cold and he said uh, bay leaves you know we all use bay leaves in cooking and he asked me if i knew about the benefits of bay leaf smoking i said no he took some bay leaves put it in one of these machine and he asked me to smoke it and i smoked it trust me or not that afternoon my pain on my throat was almost gone and when i left he did tell me that he said his grandma taught him that bay leaf smoking dry bay leaf can heal your throat well it's chinese remedy i'm sure and i didn't believe him but when i tried it because i saw him taking the bay leaf so i knew it's i'm not smoking anything bad but after using that i got healed and i knew that it worked so my point is you can still sell dry arb machine legally in your store and they're not very expensive you can uh, sell them anywhere from $39 to $79 and buy them for around $15 to $30 cost and sell them at your store and not everybody that uses dry arb is smoking marijuana no they can smoke and there are a lot of dry arb companies that are selling different types of arb from cloves to as i said bay leaves to a lot of other different spices that you can smoke uh, just about anywhere and without being noticed or without breaking any law for that matter so i just wanted you to know that as well when it came to electronic cigarettes moving on to number 2 number 2 is novelty and health products now this is one area i'm sure every one of you that is in this business already sell quite a bit of novelty items uh, i've seen it in many stores and every store i go to even 711 circle k we all carry certain degree of novelty because novelty is not like cigarettes or beer we make quite a bit of money out of those most of the time novelties work this way and when i let me explain what novelty i mean here i've seen or you have seen in some stores they sell earrings to bottle huggers or or can huggers and can openers to baseball caps to t-shirts and all that these are usually at 100% or more markup meaning 
anywhere from 30 to 70% profit margin, just like electronic cigarettes, little less maybe, but again, very profitable items. So since we cannot sell $1,000 of novelty a day, we don't make as much as we should. So my concentration is we all carry cigarettes, beer, and everything else. Every store carries that. But the way we can differentiate our store from the others is by carrying certain type of novelties that will make us stand out in the crowd. For example, one good example, let's say you're in Dallas and your store, you carry legal brand of Maverick, the, the team Maverick, uh, Dallas Maverick. You carry their baseball, I mean their caps uh, and their t-shirts. Trust me, the game day, you will sell out of those. Because people are very passionate when it comes to the sports team that they support. And being in Dallas, you should support Dallas Maverick and you should carry that brand. Similarly, lately I've noticed how health products are going through the roof. You're talking about people are trying to find alternative healing. So that's why you see even in Walmart or any other drugstore you go to, a couple of aisles are just dedicated to alternative healing products. And I'm not asking you to open a drugstore inside your store, but you have seen how much you sell five-hour energy. Then why not get into more varieties of other type of energy products alongside that five-hour energy? So if you have counter space or if you have a shelving on your counter, dedicate another three feet wide space for health-related products and ask some of your vendors, what are the top sellers right now? Because it changes often. So carry a variety of health-related products like energy-related. When I say health, energy, health. Because, you know, Red Bull, 5-Hour Energy, these are the trends now. They sell more and more every day. So capitalize on that and find some products that not your next-door neighbor is carrying or in your neighborhood, you're the first one to bring that in. For example, one bottle uh, that at right at this time, it's selling really well called Viva Zen. Maybe if you listen to the show a year from now, you may not even find that in the market. So I don't know. But right now, it's a top seller. And I remember when I brought that in from another market, I was the very first one to carry it in our whole area. And at first, it didn't sell. But within a month, I started selling cases at a time. So similarly, if you do some research, you may be able to find some health products based on your location. And be the pioneer and carry those and see the result. Because once you establish yourself, for example, that Viva Zen, the example I just gave you, once people found out that I carried it, there are people that drove 10 miles to to come to my store and to pick that up. They said, well, they cannot find it anywhere else, so they drove 10 miles. See, this is what I'm talking about. You need to be unique. You need to create some buzz around your store and stand out by carrying some product that nobody else carries and make sure the product is legal and not harmful before you buy and carry it because online you can do the research you find a lot of products and most of these are made in china but one caution one advice that i would give you is do a little bit more research find out from people or if the wholesaler is in united states or in your country if you're listening in other countries Talk to them personally and say, hey, have you tried this? Do you know customers who tried it? Is it good or not? You need to get some word of advice from a wholesaler at first before you order something that you have never heard of. And this is one thing, again, will not take much space. Just dedicate a three feet wide space next to your five hour energy. And that way you can group these products together where people look at it and say, okay, so that's the section where they carry all the health product or men's health product. There are a lot of pills and tablets nowadays for men's health that are popular. So you may also look into that and you may also see that there are some that sells really well. Uh, And again, these brands change so often. So be careful not to stock up too much. And then all of a sudden you see they're not selling. So be careful when you buy these. And buy it from a reputable vendor. And that way you know you're buying the right quality. Now, moving on to number three is cigar. Well, you all, we all carry cigars, right? 
cheap cigars, 99 cents, dollar fifty nine cigars. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about good cigars, the ones that you need a cutter to cut, and the ones that you buy out of a humidifier, where they're air controlled environment. And again, a cigar can cost as high as hundred dollars. I've heard, never bought one, but I know a good cigar can cost hundred dollars. But again. I'm not asking you to go to that extreme. A lot of people smoke cigars. A lot of people smoke cigars because there are a lot of cigar lovers and there are cigar clubs. And similarly, there are people that love wine. So now, we're going to first talk about cigar, then wine. Cigar is something that you can carry in a decent price range from $5 to $15 range. And again, your profit margin is 50% in most of these or more. Find yourself a good cigar supplier. Talk to some people online. There are some good cig- cigar retail uh, wholesalers online. If you do not find one, email me and I will find one because I know we dealt with a company and I don't have the name right off the top of my head, but I will find it for you. And they carry some very good sellers that are very high in demand. And what you can do is just go to Amazon, buy a humidifier, spend about three, four, five hundred dollars $500. It only takes maybe two square foot space on your counter or behind your counter. You don't even have to put it on the counter. And try to buy one with lights in it or try to focus a light in it and keep about $100, $200 of the cigar in there. Trust me, you may not sell one the first day, but within three, four, five days, you're going to start selling one or two or three a day. And pretty soon, you'll have a steady business of cigar lovers that will come to store. They will not only buy the cigar, but they may buy some beer or some wine or usually cigar lovers are usually wine lovers as well. Not always, but it, I've seen many of the times that whoever buys a cigar usually goes buys a bottle of wine. So try the cigar. And again, you're not going to invest thousands of dollars. At most, you will invest $500 and the return will come back in about a month at the most. And then you keep continuing the business and again by this you're gaining some customer because that cigar lover will go tell some of his friends that you carry good cigars so they will come buy it from you as well next in the number which is number four is wine now again wine bottles good old wine bottles let's say if it's a 10 year old wine 20 year old wine they can cost upwards in thousands and again we're not going to that extreme but If you're carrying beer, which you are, talk to your beer vendors if they carry wine. If not, I'm sure in your city you have a vendor that carries just wine. Bring them in, talk to them, find out what are the good sellers in your area. Every area is different. Something sells better here may not sell in New York. So find out what are the top 10, 15 sellers and then give him a price range. Say, hey, I want to carry anywhere from $5.99 to let's say nineteen ninety nine uh, price range wine. And remember one time I talked about when we were talking about merchandising, I said we used to dedicate eight foot of shelving space just for paper goods. When I say paper goods, I mean uh, paper plates, paper cups, napkins, toilet tissue, um, fall paper wraps, and uh, those type of things. All eight foot took, the, uh, eight foot of space took for that carrying all the paper goods. Then I realized we looked at our sales and I started analyzing how much sales do we generate out of that eight foot section. And we found out that we were generating right around $75 to $100 a week, which is negligible when it comes to that big of a space because eight foot of gondola shelvings means every, you know, this comes in four foot sections. So every four foot has four shelves. So I was giving paper goods products, four times four, which is 16 foot of shelving, and then another four foot section, which is four times four is 16. So altogether, 32 feet of shelving just for this, when I'm only generating $75 to $100 a week. So next time when I was reorganizing a store, and I believe I spoke about it in the merchandising episode, What I did is I dedicated only four foot of space for paper goods. So I shrunk from eight foot to four, just carrying the main sellers, bathroom tissue, some paper towels, some facial tissue and whatnot. And I cut down on some of the other ones that are very slow. 
because I looked at my order frequency and I said, okay, I don't, if I'm ordering something every three months, I don't need to carry that. And then the other four foot section, which has four shelves, four foot each means 16 foot. I dedicated that 16 feet of shelving just for wine. And again, I told my wine people that you need to put the cheapest wine <clears throat> at the bottom and go your, go up, means the price goes up, the shelf goes up. So all the way to the top shelf, on the fourth top shelf, I have my most expensive ones, which were from $15.99 to $19.99 bottle wine. And I believe in the very next month, that four foot section generated $300 the very first month. Now, let's look at the difference. I was generating $75 to $100 from eight foot section. And now I'm generating $300 from very first month from that four foot. And the other four foot that I have papers, my sale went down to, I believe it was like 60 or $65. So let's say I lost $10 of the sales uh, a month, but I gained extra $300. And the profit margin is really good when it comes to wine. I believe our profit margin is right around 38 to 45 percent. So again, that $300 was giving me quite a bit of income. But coming back to the point where first month it gave me $300 sales. But let's talk about now. It's been two years. Right now, weekly sales are right around 225 wine sales. So it is about $1,000 a month we're doing on wine right now. As I said, we started off with $300 the very first month, but now we have built it up enough so it's doing that volume, which is $1,000 a month. And let's say in $1,000 a month, if I'm doing 40% profit, I'm generating $400 extra a month just from that carrying wine. So you see, if you add this 400 here, 250 there, 500 there, you're going to see over $1,000 of profit, extra, extra profit. You're not spending any extra power bill, no extra water bill, no extra labor, and no extra hours that you have to keep your store open. Same, exact same thing that you do every day. Just by carrying these type of items, you can generate and put extra money in your pocket without doing any more effort than what it takes. As I said, Cigarette, electronic cigarette, you can spend five, seven hundred dollars or maybe thousand dollars of inventory, get that started. And then you can do health products, just three, four hundred dollars. Cigar, wine, again, five hundred dollars. Wine may cost you a little bit more. Uh, I, I believe our first uh, inventory, when we first bring, brought in to fill up the shelves, it, it was around fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars. But again, it was a very good investment because as you see, the money is sitting on your shelf and it's been selling. So it's not like your money is going out the window. Okay, moving on to number five. I believe we're going past the 40-minute marker already. Number five is something you should try. You may not get it, but it is a red box video rental. You see these red boxes in, every, in front of every grocery store or drug store and a lot of different places. They usually find a high traffic area and that's where they put those machines. If you go to their website, there is a place where you can apply for a red box machine to have it in your location. Once they do the research about your location, if they see that their your location is suitable or have enough traffic for them to put, put a machine, they will put a red box machine in front of your store. And trust me, it is a good thing to have. It brings in a lot of customers. And trust me, most of these customers, what they do is, once they rent a movie, they have to have soda, chips, beer, popcorn, or whatnot, and they will be coming inside your store to buy those things. Anytime you can bring more people through that door, it's better for you. Always, that is my goal, that I, how can I bring more people through that door? Now, if it, if it is... To put a red box outside, yes, why not? Any attraction you can add to your location, by all means, do that. Bring more people in. Out of 10, if three people extra buy something from a store, it's three extra sales that you have that you didn't have yesterday. So the focus should be how you can bring more people in and carry some unique items that nobody else carries. 
For example, if you have a good wine selection, I'm sure your next next door neighbor or the convenience store next door to you or within a mile from you is not doing that. They're carrying wine, only the basic cheap wines. If you can carry some good cigars, good wine, a good selection of electronic cigarettes, you're attracting different type of customers to visit your store and only for those reasons. So it's not like a pack of Marlboro. They can buy it from that store or your store, doesn't matter. Because it's the same thing. If they're looking for a good quality electronic cigarette or a liquid, let's say you carry a specific type of blueberry liquid, they can't find anywhere else in that city. They will be coming to you for that. If you carry a specific type of cigar, that they may go to the mall and buy it, or they come to you because you live, they live closer to you, they will come to you and buy it. And also remember, going to the mall or places like that, you have to park the car, walk about a quarter of a mile and all that. Here, they can park right in front of your door and walk in, buy it, walk out. So it's the convenience and it's the uniqueness of your product that can make you stand out in this crowd. And this way, you will have some loyal customers that will be coming to you every day to buy those items. So far, just to recap, we talked about five ideas like electronic cigarettes, novelty and health-related products, cigars, wine, and then the movie rental booths. So consume this information. Think of it. You may not want to try all five of them. You may try one and say, okay, you know, I picked up another extra $100 out of this. Then you may get motivated to try another one. Regardless, remember to listen to the next episode because I will be sharing another five ideas or six, I believe, that you can try and see which one works better. So let's say all together, I'm sharing 10 ideas with you. I don't want you to try all 10 because you may confuse yourself and not only that, you may confuse your employees. Too many new things at once is not a good idea. So try one at a time and let's say once you try the electronic cigarette, next you may just want to reorganize a part of your store and carry wine. Then you may get into cigars in a month or two. Slowly but surely, once you start making these changes, you will see you're generating more and more extra income that will add to your bottom line. So once again, stay tuned for the next week's episode. This will be the second part of what we talked about today and where I will be discussing another five or six ideas that you can try in your gas station or any other retail business that you have. And since we're already at the 50 minute marker, I have decided not to do the email segment today. And I was going to answer email from a person named Bipin and PK. So please stay tuned. I will, I promise I will answer both of your emails in the next episode, which will be the second part of what we talked about today. So let's get to the book. You know, I recommend a book every week. And in today's book, is it's written by Dave Ramsey. And I'm sure all of you, even though you may not read too many books, but I'm sure you know the name Dave Ramsey, because we see him on TV. We know he has a radio show for many, many years. And he's a personal finance guy. He's a financial advisor. And he's very well known for his advice. So there is one book that I think you should all read. And I've read it. And it makes you think differently about your personal finances. And I think it makes you more organized in a way. You know, if you're more organized in your own personal finances... Your business runs better. Trust me on that. If you have too many worries about your personal finances, it reflects on your business as well. So please read this book. The book is called The Total Money Makeover. And I'm sure if you follow that link, if you go to my show note, you can follow that link and it will take you to Amazon and you can take a look at that book. But this book, as I said, was an eye opener for me because we are, maybe we can be all very good business person, but A lot of us are not very good financial person when it comes to personal finances. So you may get benefited from reading this book. Once again, thank you for listening to this podcast. And I hope I was able to offer some sort of value to you for your time. Take good care of yourself and I will talk to you next week with that second part of this episode. Take care. This has been the one and only Gas Station Business 101 podcast with your host, Shabir Hossein. 
This podcast was brought to you by CSB Academy Publishing Company. Be sure to join us next time as we share with you the secrets about how to start and operate a gas station business successfully and make money.